Battle Priest into that. Wildcard Gaming just a step ahead once again. They're going to be locking in the Elemental Shaman Frost Mage. Now, I don't think the Elemental Shaman Frost Mage has a massive advantage in this matchup, but I do think they might have a slight lead. Definitely going to be interesting. I'm anticipating this to be quite a long game, maybe even the longest during the day. These two compositions are very durable. Ranged Spellcaster Cleave. So aside from some significant mistakes, they will be able to always play at an advantageous position to avoid the most amount of damage. Although currently just chilling out in midfield, not really the best position to be when your healer is crowd controlled. Looney has to use his Glider's Medallion to remove that Polymorph and connect Iron Bark. Morrow then looks to counter engage and attack Valet, but Mpoike immediately stabilizes that. So throughout the first attack, let's take stock of the cooldowns. Icy Veins was used by both mages, so no advantage there. Glider's Medallion used for Looney and not for Mpoike, so slight advantage to change my mind early on. Yeah, like you said, these teams sitting in midfield, sitting in Blizzard, they're definitely going to be chilling in this matchup. Pride Kitty caught into a lightning lasso right now. Good burst damage here coming from Wildcard Gaming. Polymorph setup onto Valet. Lightning Lasso on the Fried Kitty. These are the consistent setups we could potentially see from Wildcard Gaming moving forward. But like you said, outside of a massive Elemental Shaman one-shot, I feel like this is a matchup that probably will need some sort of dampening. Both Restoration Druids playing relatively passive, going for early drinks, keeping their mana nice and high. If at any moment someone's taking too much damage, they can retreat back to the pillar, out of line of sight. Belay getting bursted down. Gladiator Safeguard, a nice little lifeline he has available to avoid some of that Elemental Shaman burst one-shot opportunity. But now without that available, needs to be a little bit careful. Oh, and Poike wanted to bash Morrow, but got totally shut down on it. Now he's bashed himself possibly into a ring of frost valet life gripping and poike out of that crowd control but now they're both stuck in it they're not able to get to their teammates who's on the opposite side of the map and poike decides to jump over it try and get back to fried kitty but he doesn't want to risk compromising his positioning running out in midfield as a healer is a big mistake in this matchup you can see looney he's basically inside of the pillar looney doesn't or minpoike doesn't want to leave the pillar either you're going to be exposed to crowd control looney sees an opportunity to get in stealth jump across the map stun into cyclone good crowd control chain the classic fried kitty the target here but with ice barrier and his positioning at the pillar isn't taking too much damage mara lining up an evan bolt flurry that breaks down the shield of Fried Kitty. z landing a Stormkeeper. This could be some decent damage with these lightning bolts onto Fried Kitty with the Ray of Frost. Fried Kitty blinking back to Minpoike's side. Big heal there. More importantly, that Minpoike is running Soul of the Forest, so when he swift mends, he will get a buff called Soul of the Forest. This amplifies his next heal. He used it on Regrowth, which almost turns Regrowth into as powerful of a heal as Lay on Hands, topping his Mage off, and that is a good move, a good heal to select when in a Mage versus Mage, because the Kleptomania isn't nearly as effective as if it was able to steal a Rejuvenation. So I do like his Soul of the Forest usage there. Immediate recovery and no advantage given to the other team. Wildcard Gaming now engaging crowd control again. This time, Valet the target. He is out in midfield. Multiple Gliders Maledict, that Shadow Ball incoming. Valet not taking too much damage, though, as a result of it. Now turning the tables, going after z -Pi. Looney being interrupted by Fried Kitty. Well-timed there, but still no real opening. Literally looking at mana at this point to see who has the edge when Poike is drinking, so I believe he regenerated to tie up with Looney, and mana will be important when we get closer to dampening most certainly could be the one win condition for either team that is guaranteed damage on morrow good uh, counter attack by change my mind however that was the icy veins of fried kitty so if that subsides and they don't get any other cooldown of significance morrow still has his he can then look to counter attack with it and potentially net a kill so change my mind we'll need to be aware of this threat until morrow has decided to pull the trigger on it yeah, we talked a little bit about the Frost Mage spell steal, especially with the Honor Talent Kleptomania. It's really powerful at removing tons of heal over time effects. In fact, all of the heal over time effects that these Restoration Druids have. Keep in mind, both teams, you know, changed my mind. They have the Shadow Priest, Wildcard Gaming. They have z on the Elemental Shaman. Both of them also have uh, Dispel um, uh, capabilities in this matchup, so they can use the Purge for the Elemental Shaman, the Dispel Magic for the Elemental Priest, and that's where these games can sort of start spiraling out of control, especially later on. The Restoration Druid is going to rely on some of those heal over time effects, and if they fall too far behind, and Zeke by Valet, they can use those offensive dispels to keep 
uh, target clean of the heal over time effects and really start generating a lot of pressure. Which is why as the Druid in this matchup, you only want to be using Soul of the Forest on regrowth, using that for a big powerhouse heal rather than amplifying your heal over time effects because they'll just be stolen or removed. So both Druids using the Soul of the Forest effectively to top off their partners, partners and when they are in dire straits, no significant lead just yet, but Dampening has entered the fight. As I do anticipate this to potentially break records between these two compositions, both teams really lack punch, the lack of a destruction warlock, the lack of chaos bolts. There's no real significant burst damage outside of potentially an earth shock, at least early on. However, deeper into dampening, the upwards of 40 to 50 percent, the sustained damage of the shadow priest, the sustained damage of the elemental shaman will start to sink in, and it is possible that we could see any member of this game die and, I, and when i say that i mean at the same time so this game does get quite chaotic and quite hectic but it does require a significant amount of dampening to do so yep see by getting a little bit low looney to spelling off some of those shadow priest damage over time effects both teams are sort of stabilized at this point. Morrow, Fried Kitty, both in midfield. z going for Lightning Lasso. That gets trinketed by Fried Kitty. Looney actually making an offensive push, getting crowd control over on him in Poike as he leaps away, likely to go try and recover his mana. Looney using a lot of Cyclone. Set uses a lot of mana. And now because of that, he is a little bit behind as he charges in stealth and sitting down for a drink. Minpoike trying to shut that down. Is he going to be able to? That's the question. Rake's done over on Minpoike as z makes a swap on him. In the meantime, Morrow generating some pressure on Valet in midfield. Minpoike getting stunned up. Good setup here from z punishing Minpoike for trying to deny Looney from drinking. I don't actually know if Looney got out of combat. He did. He reset his mana. And now, wildcard gaming, they actually have a lead at around 10% dampening. Yeah, and before deep dampening, they have the edge just because they have the elemental shaman. One big earth shock could KO someone if they don't respond appropriately or in time before their health reaches zero. Of course, at that point, they will lose. 12% dampening and continuing to rise. Mana lead in favor of wildcard gaming. Interesting crowd control chain here by a change of my mind, the Psychic Scream on Looney and the Silence on z -Pi. They use Silence to prevent Tremor Totem, which removes Psychic Scream, so that's why Valet spread those crowd control effects on the two members. Wasn't really able to capitalize any damage off that play and instead had to use his Dispersion. And this is one of those fights where if you play aggressive and push forward, you're just compromising your positioning, you're risking losing. It's quite difficult to actually make the decision to push. Currently, Wildcard Gaming in the driver's seat with two members crowd controlled and then the third on the run and basically dead. This could easily be an ice block, and yes, it will. So now a mana lead and a cooldown lead. Dampening continues to ramp up. Fried Kitty is looking to be the focus fire target for Wildcard Gaming, but of course they can't always switch. Switching targets in this matchup is definitely going to be happening a lot as the focus fire target could stay at the pillar for an extended period of time and you're just forced to deal damage to another target, which will then expend more mana from the Druids. And then when the mana has run out, there's going to be no more healing. And then it is at this point that the fireworks start. I still think at this point of the game, Fried Kitty should be using his cold snap. Finally, he does, but he's about 40 seconds behind on that cooldown. So it'll be interesting to see if that ends up mattering later on. If he waited too long and, you know, if Cold Snap or Ice Block only has a 30-second cooldown left, that might end up costing them the game. But for now, he's safe with one more Ice Block. He gets topped off by Minpoike. If we look at Mana once again, Wild Card Gaming, they have the lead. We're at 21% dampening. Belay caught in the midfield, getting bursted down. And the problem with the Shadow Priest is he doesn't have the same sort of mobility as the Elemental Shaman. So if he gets stuck in these situations where z and Maro can just spam out damage onto him, makes it really difficult for him to survive. But at any moment, he could use the Dispersion to run away if he really needed to. And Poike trying to position far away, trying to reset his mana, but there's just good pressure here for Wildcard Gaming. Valet getting bursted down once again, and Poike cannot afford to go for these drinks right now. Ring of Frost being channeled out. Nice double Ring of Frost setup coming in from Maro. Valet left all on his own. Crowd control breaks early. Minpoike actually trinketed it out. Now Belay still just trying to escape. He uses his greater fade. Dispersion's still available if he needs it, but Minpoike is really struggling to keep him alive. At the start of the game, we weren't certain whether or not which team had the advantage, but I think at this point, it's clear that Wildcard Gaming have the advantage. I think, change my mind, if they win this, they have to make it to 60% dampening with a full mana bar. Right now, they're about halfway with basically zero mana left. So they are far away from that goal point to victory, and they're just gonna be pinned down at the pillar, under fire, constantly stressed, and 
it's going to be so difficult for them to actually make it to that point where the Shadow Priest damage will start to sink in. Resto Druid's the most powerful healer I would consider in the meta. Some situations where the other healers are brought in for a slight advantage, but in this matchup in particular, they are just a very powerful healer, quite durable, and there's no Mortal Strike effect to reduce their healing. So this game is going to be going on for some time. Fried Kitty under fire again. Minpoike is polymorphed. I don't believe Master Spell is available, so he's going to have to sit through that. This means that Fried Kitty will likely have to ice block. He's trying to do some evasive maneuvers, sneaking around the sides of the pillars and holding on to dear life. He does not want to have to use his last ice block, but he certainly has to as Zipai and Maro close in around him. Minpoike is still crowd controlled. Void Shift available for Valet, and perhaps he's hovering over that as Fried Kitty is struggling to even recover. Minpoike gets out of crowd control. Fortunate that he has Innervate here. Innervate making all of his healing spells free so he can spend a lot of expensive spells like Wild Growth, save his mage. But Wildcard Gaming have actually just even abandoned the mage as the target, now pressuring down Valet. Valet Minpoike will have to heal two targets. That's going to cost him more mana. He may not even Whoa! be able to heal through it. There's a lot of damage. Dispersion from Valet prevents the kill and possibly allows Minpoike to recover, but now still continue to be crowd controlled. Wildcard Gaming are asserting dominance in game number one. This is looking disastrous for change my mind. Minpoike goes into a polymorph. He has to trink it out. It just came up in the nick of time. Valet in a little bit of trouble. Fry Kitty has the Icy Veins available. Maybe at this moment he could counter pressure. We are at almost 40% dampening where really anything could happen. Beautiful counter spell going to be landed by Fry Kitty, slowing down Looney's heals just a little bit. Zipai, though, in a good position to avoid damage if he really needs to. Innervate going to be enough to extend Looney's man top off his team's hit points and now wildcard gaming once again they're in a great position belay has no dispersion another 50 seconds fried kitty no ice block for another 40 seconds he has to wait for that cold snap cooldown Poike getting bursted down he's caught into a stun wildcard gaming all over the place the leap of faith gonna be used by Valet to keep Min Poike alive bringing him out of line of sight but this victory is slipping out of their hands. Yeah, I mean, at this point, what else can they do? All three members are at half health. Dampening at 41%, and Minpoike at basically 5% mana. Minpoike has a choice to make. Go in cap form and attack and hope they kill the target before his team dies. That's basically his only option. It's do or die at this point, and he is trying his best to attack Zipai and put some pressure on the board for his team. He could be the X-Factor with the Feral Affinity, but it is such a risky maneuver when he's under so much pressure. He has to both heal and deal damage. Looney jumps in, denies the recovery on the Tranquility with a bash. Valet flay, fades the Gladiator's Maledict, but now there's a Lightning Lasso. He has Dispersion for that. Valet is actually making a bold move here. By running into the enemy team, he soaks all the important spells and trades a cooldown. Fried Kitty didn't have any cooldowns to make the trade, so Valet is basically throwing himself at his opponents to try and soak damage, but he's now totally out of cooldowns himself, so he can really no longer stay in this position. It is going to be a race to the finish. I do see potential for multiple members in this game to die at the same time. They're there is still now finally damage sinking in on Namaro and Zipai. The Shadow Priest dots at 50% dampening are going to be effective. Valet using his Gladiator's Medallion to remove the Lightning Lasso, so he does not take the percent health damage, but Fried Kitty has no Icebox remaining. And Poike is in a Polymorph, unable to heal. Cold Snap in eight more seconds. Can Wildcard Gaming kill before that period of time? They're not even going to go after the Mage. Instead, switching back to Valet. He is an immobile target on that Shadow Priest. It will be very difficult for him to escape to safety. His healer is still crowded controlled Valet doing everything that he can to make it to that 60% dampening mark to maybe have a shot, but ultimately not able to make it all of the way. And Wildcard Gaming take game one. He is or one of their win conditions. I mean, one of their win conditions potentially be getting Looney out of mana, but I don't think they need to do that. It's going to be about high aggression on either Zipai or Maro with a lot of dispels. Valet on that Shadow Priest is going to be able to use dispel magic quite often. And it's going to be about just getting Looney behind uh, so they can just get a kill with all out aggression, not necessarily because he's just completely tapped on mana so it makes a little bit of sense to me that they would do that but like you said it is a bit odd and i don't think this is a matchup where change my wind just automatically win like wild card gaming with the frost mage elemental shaman they're still going to have a lot of burst potential fillet he's going to have to deal with a lot of interrupts and on this map, it's going to be very easy for Wildcard Gaming to sort of kite around and deny Acro a lot of his damage. The only way that this map makes sense is that it's like a heads-up play in the series overall. They feel they can win the matchup on this map, and but they know Wildcard Gaming has a counter to their Rogue Shadow Priest. So they're, in a way, trying to steal a map away from Wildcard Gaming, future on and moving into the series. But 
I, I don't think this map is favorable to them if they wanted to get a guaranteed victory with this composition. Something smaller where the Shadow Priest and the Rogue can stay on target and get back to defense soon. I mean, look at right now, Valet is just in the middle of the map and pillars are so far away from him and he's going to be stuck there and his healer is crowd controlled, has to use Gladiator's Medallion already to remove it. And now they're just going to abandon the kill. Polymorph Valet, maybe even just switch targets to Acro. I mean, Wildcard Gaming can tee off on whoever they want on this map against this composition. I'm not a fan of it. Menpoike is Cyclone now. Acro is getting hammered, and look where he is, middle of the map. The Z bike and free cast. Morrow is just having his way with Acro, just avoiding him with snares or potentially pulling him very far away and then around a corner. Finally, some counter aggression, though, for Change My Mind as they go after Morrow, but no crowd control on Looney. Finally, Mind Bomb. That will hold Looney in place, but Acro again having a difficult time trying to sap out of Mind Bomb. Does get it. Good crowd control chain here by Change My Mind. This could easily be the first ice block of the game if they can stay on target. It needs to be the first ice block of the game. They drop the smoke bomb to press the issue, and they get it. One major objective out of the way, and a good sign of life from Change My Mind. Yeah, change my mind. Those are the exact setups that they want. They just get a lot of aggression rolling. Valet can just spam out the Dispel Magic, and they can just ride off that momentum. Morrow now, one ice block down, has another available. Looney into some crowd control. Mind Bomb into silence. Trinket rolling up at around 18 seconds. If you look at Mana, Looney a little bit ahead in this particular matchup. There is decent damage rolling for Wildcard Gaming. A little bit of pressure so far in this game, but... I think Acro's going to be fine. He still has his Cloak of Shadows. That's a big safety net for him. Valet hasn't had to use any of his defensive cooldowns yet. Lightning Lasso now on Acro. They need to be careful. They have to try to shut that down if they can. Into a Reg Stun. Big burst damage potential. But Mimpoike seems to be easily able to deal with it at this time. He stabilizes Acro. And I think this is basically going to be one of those games where your strategy is abuse the melee. Just as much as you can throughout the game. Try to get damage rolling on Acro, bring him into positions where, you know, he's compromised and it's not going to be easy for Mipoike and Valet to back him up. But so far, it hasn't been working. Change My Mind has been able to deal with that quite easily. Oh, Tremor Totem able to remove Mind Bomb. That's definitely almost a bit of a soft counter from Wildcard Gaming. I'm wondering if Change My Mind had anticipated that. That means they're going to need to cross crowd control the Elemental Shaman on those big pushes. Acro in a lot of trouble. Cyclone dead. A sliver of health. I mean, Looney and Catform could kill him through Cloak of Shadows if he's not careful in this position. Cyclone again at very low health. I mean, Poike is not bashed. Cloak is required, but it's going to be fading and subsiding. Its defense, its immunity to magic is now over. He's still not in a safe position. Now in a Lightning Lasso. No Glider's Medallion. This could be a Void Shift if Morrow can support. Looney, though, gets sapped. Perhaps Change My Mind can turn this on its head and get some pressure. They are targeting Z-Pi. They realize that the Tremor Totem is going to be a threat to the crowd control that they've brought to game number two. They need pressure on the Elemental Shaman. Even though they've been working so hard to get Ice Blocks from Morrow, they may be required to actually attack the Shaman. Blind play here onto Looney. He uses Glider's Medallion to break it. That is a pretty standard play as a healer to use your Medallion to remove Blind. It's the longest guaranteed crowd control in the match. Acro in a bit of trouble though, another lightning lasso. Minpoike saves him with Iron Bark, continues his assault, but Cyclone with Ursul's Vortex holding him at the pillar. Acro is gonna have a difficult time making it back to his target unless he uses a Shadow Step. And then if he does, he's gonna get Thunderstormed. So Acro definitely being abused by the matchup and the map. Frost Nova on the Polymorph to spell. I, I mean, Acro has been in one spot for the better part of 20 seconds, and Looney's taking advantage of that to sit down and drink. Change my mind are pushing for aggression while they see the healer drinking. Ooh. And Poike tried to snipe him with Vortex to get him in combat, but ended up missing. He, he had to guess. He didn't know exactly where he was, but regardless, Looney now has a significant mana lead. Oh, no. There might be an issue here with Zipai's running in place. Uh, finally going to be back. Looney and some crowd control. Needs to be able to top him off. Is he going to be able to do so? It does look like it. And that was a big drink there. Big moment for Wild Card Gaming to stay in this matchup. Acro is still vulnerable. No Cloak of Shadows for another 23 seconds. But there's a lot of lifelines here for Change My Mind. They still have the Void Shift. They still have Iron Bark Trinket from Mpoike. Big setup now onto Zipai. Looney responds with the Iron Bark to deny some of that damage. And I don't know, Sid, who do you feel like is going to be favored as this matchup advances into later stages of dampening? I feel like Wildcard Gaming is certainly going to be favored, and it would be unfortunate for any player to have a technical difficulty as it is their personal responsibility, maintain their connection into the match. So the match will not be remade if there is a problem. So hopefully Wildcard Gaming are not going to continue to have that. That would be a devastating way to go down in game number two and have the series tied up. And Poike, very far in the corner, drinking. 
I, I mean, that is the trade, although he was sniped by the Earthbind Totem of Zipai, so I do believe he did not regenerate any mana, and he didn't, so Drink Denial on point from Wild Card Gaming. Their abuse of the map that changed my mind picked is on point. They've now developed a significant lead, moving into dampening. They've got great crowd control in this position with three members locked down. They're trying to follow up with Big Burst. Ooh. Ray of Frost is going to get Cloak of Shadows. Acrolol now needs to be careful as he will not have that immunity to effectively all of the damage on Wildcard Gaming's team. The most powerful cooldown in the arsenal, Change My Mind, is now not available. Yeah, Cloak of Shadow is such a powerful ability for Acro. Anytime Wildcard Gaming can force that out, it allows Acro to be a, such a vulnerable target for, you know, two minutes. He's got about a minute and 40 seconds left until that cooldown rolls back up once again. But as a rogue, you have to be very careful. So far, Acro has been doing a good job rotating through his defensives, but he actually opts to use his Trinket and Vanish aggressively. I'm not sure they're going to be able to get too much done. He's just going full on crowd control right now onto oh, Looney. He has his Trinket. A problem. Z5 is just getting lower. Unfortunate. Good crowd control coming in from Acro, and I think that will be the game tied up here. Changed my mind, winning on Ashman's fall. Yep, obviously unfortunate there for Zipai, uh, pr presumably dis disconnecting from the. I, they felt the need to go with it. I mean, they set the map up for this comp, but changed my mind, then took the map in their own advantage by going with the Mage Rogue. So, Wildcard Gaming are just saying, well, we're confident with this comp on the map, even though, technically speaking, Rogue Mage has been historically the best pick into an elemental shaman so it's pretty even in that regard due to both teams reluctance to try and take the advantage compositionally but rather play around the map's advantage it's kind of interesting what do you feel about menpoike acro and fried kitty all running relentless in this matchup uh, maybe it's to deal with the lightning lasso try and reduce its effectiveness overall um, it does mean that if Menpoike is ever polymorphed, he will not be able to get out and escape, especially if one of his partners are lightning lassoed. So it's it's maybe just to maximize their damage. That's the only thing that really makes sense to me, and then reduce the effectiveness of lightning lasso. Whereas on the opposing side, of course, all three members running Glider's Medallion, that is to deal with the rogue as the threat. You typically want to be, unless you're playing orc or human, uh, you want to be running that Gladiator's Medallion because the Rogue Smoke Bomb is such a big threat. If you're not running that, you'll just be caught in that line of sight blocker and burst it down. I mean, already instantly at the start of the game, Acro has dropped that Smoke Bomb. Zipai able to escape out of it, but into a Cyclone at low health, and Cyclone stops healing and damage, so he's going to hover at that health until he comes out. Looney, though, immediately recovers. I would say that Wildcard Gaming dealt with that Smoke Bomb very easily, not even having to use Iron Bark or Astral Shift. No Gladiator's Medallion, so Acro's early aggression not paying off. Yeah, it's interesting too. Pretty much everyone in this game is running the Night Elf uh, race, and if you're wondering why, it's for the Racial Shadow Meld, and if they're not running that, they're going to be running the Dark Iron Dwarf, and the reason why so many of these players and so many of these teams have opted in to these two different racials is to deal with the Gladiator's Maledict. When it was first introduced, players really didn't know how to deal with it, and it was just overwhelming. People were just falling down from three members of the team throwing in a Gladiator's Maledict. It's overwhelming amount of healing reduction, healing absorb, and damage. So they decided to go with the Shadow Meld, with the Dark Iron Dwarf to help sort of mitigate those trinkets and stay alive in the, this, you know, in the game for a prolonged period of time. It's an adaptation these teams made, specifically when that trinket uh, was brought in. Yep, definitely a nice pickup to playing the Night Elf and the Dark Iron Dwarf. Decent damage here on Fried Kitty. Actually a bit surprising this early on. And Poike, though, out of crowd control and able to stabilize. It should be fairly easy for both Druids to be able to drink on this map, so my anticipation for this is that it's going to be a long-haul game, definitely into the deeper stages of dampening, and there's going to be a critical mass point, I think around the 20 and 30% mark, where Acro will force Astral Shift from Zipai and still have Vendetta, and then have one opportunity to push and kill, and if they don't get the kill on Zipai in that opportunity, then they will lose. In this position, they've actually gotten Astral Shift before Vendetta. Perhaps they can create that situ situation prior to dampening. This crowd control attempt from Change My Mind definitely on point, banking them some very important cooldowns. They've actually managed to continue the chain. Multiple Gladiators Maledicts. Acro definitely needs to stay on target, but gets Lightning Lassoed, so he's held in place, unable to finish off the target. And actually, Fried Kitty was taking quite a bit of damage from Morrow amidst that push. Minpoike now taking a huge chunk of his health away from Zipai's Earth Shock. Wildcard Gaming focusing on just maximizing their damage output, and Minpoike is having a tough time. Acro getting low. What is he going to be able to do? Minpoike 50% mana at this point of the game. Looney way ahead at around 75%. 
Carl looking for some polymorphs, does manage to find it on Acro. He just wants to slow down, change my mind. They realize they have a mana advantage at this point. If they can just keep up the strategy, it will potentially net them a win. And Poike trying to get out of combat, trying to sit down for a drink. Can Zipai, can Marl stop them? Doesn't look like they're going to be able to. Finally, yeah, actually they do. They find the Earthquake. And with the pos this positioning, Looney is in a great spot to sit down and recover his mana by drinking, extending their lead even further. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get too much. It's good for change my mind. Minpoike has to start healing really efficiently in this matchup. He has the Innervate. Going to be waiting for a good moment to use that where he really has to use a lot of mana to catch up, like right now. So he uses the Innervate. Oh, oh whoa! Uh, Acro, I cannot believe Acro didn't use Cloak of Shadows there. I mean, he ended up using the Vanish, but that was lucky. Acro barely holds on 5% health, and that's one of the scary things about playing up against a Frost Mage, playing up against an Elemental Shaman, is at any moment they can throw a big Shatter combo paired with an Earth Shock, and they can just wipe the floor with you. Acro has to definitely be careful of that moving forward. I almost can't believe that he didn't cloak on top of being at that low health. I mean, he could have just thrown the game away entirely at that point in time. And that's the one thing, although it is a long series, every game going into deep dampening, the Elemental Shaman still has the potential to just erase you. So if you're even falling asleep at the keyboard for a moment, you are going to get blasted out of the arena, and Zipai will be taking advantage of that in any opportunity. Wildcard Gaming, in their past tournament lives, have been known as the dampeners. They love taking it into as deep dampening as possible, dragging the fight out, fatiguing the opposing team. They are definitely known for this strategy, masters of it, so change my mind, need to make sure they're on point and not falling asleep at the wheel here in this series. They face elimination. Yeah, I mean, it's a scary moment. Acro in a lightning lasso, keep in mind, He's playing relentless. All these lightning lassos will sit full. So I really feel like Wildcard Gaming, they're abusing that. And Acro, he doesn't have an opportunity sometimes to get that Cloak of Shadow and that Vanish off when he really needs it. And that could end up netting a kill for Wildcard Gaming. So although it does reduce the overall damage, you're still so susceptible to just getting stuck in those stuns. that I don't know if it was the right decision to make. And then Poike gets shut down on the drink once again. Stun onto Acro into a lightning lasso. Looney in a great position and that's one of the advantages that wildcard gaming have on this map is looney is always so positioned he's positioned very far away and it's really difficult for acro and fried kitty to shut that down and poike positioning now in a good spot if he can recover his mana things will be looking good for change my mind as they are way behind looks like change my mind they're not even going to bother shutting it down and i think this is a big mistake yeah definitely could be both druids regenerated back to pretty much full mana so an even ball game moving into deep dampening we're getting that 20 30 percent dampening mark so change my mind need to look to try and get astral shift without using either icy veins or vendetta and then make a push later and try and kill z Pi with one of those two cooldowns if they can set that situation up with good crowd control on looney and deny maro from casting polymorph then most certainly change my mind can find victory here and potentially put wildcard gaming on match point however if they aren't able to create that situation and they can't overwhelm z Pi and he is able to escape then the deeper into dampening we go the deeper down the rabbit hole we go the more advantaged in favor wildcard gaming it will become as their damage will just start to stick and Minpoike will not be able to heal through it. Acro will struggle to stay on target, so there's limited time windows where they can get pressure. They've activated Venteta. They're making a big push for that Astral Shift while Looney was trying to drink. Can they get it is the question. They're not even getting the Astral Shift. Zipai going into Ghost Wolf using likely the Honor Talent Spectral Recovery, which every three seconds heals him for a percent of his health, and the Azerite Trait Pack Spirit. These Azerite, this Azerite trait and the Honor Talent combined together turns your Ghost Wolf into a Panzer tank. And unless you can strip it off with Spell Steel before deeper stages of dampening, it is very unlikely that you will be able to kill a Shaman through those combinations of Honor Talents and Azerite traits. I can't be the only one wondering this. What is a Panzer tank? A Panzer tank? Isn't it like a... It's a German tank, isn't it? It's like the best tank or something. I don't know. It's it has the, the most, highest it's armor. It's the most OP tank. Yeah, that's, what, that's, that's, that's supposed to be the reference. Someone Google this. <laughs> Make sure that I'm right, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. All right. Well, now that we all know that, the more you know, knowledge is power. Acro going to be taking a little bit of damage. He does put a kitty shot over on the z trying to generate some pressure. We're at 20% dampening at this point. Looney into a crowd control. Nice Polymorph secured there by Fried Kitty. Marl backing him up by just spamming out Polymorph onto Fried Kitty, and that's what it's all about for Marl. Any time that Change My Mind starts developing pressure, he can just throw out Polymorphs onto Acro and Fried Kitty. 
their moments of opportunity in this matchup are much lower. So whenever they do find them, Marl can just control up the game as much as possible. As long as he stays alive, as long as he can drag Acro into the open, it's going to be a major benefit to his team. It could definitely be a benefit. Acro and Zpai are going to be the focus fire targets here as dampening gets higher and higher. So all the pressure will be on them to kind of anticipate attacks, get into the best defensive position before getting dropped and you are going to drop very fast into deep dampening. Although it has been fairly slow pace up to this point, things will rapidly ramp up. And currently Acro is leading the charge to try and build pressure here on z -Pi. Looney dispels that Gladiator's Maledict effect, removing its healing absorption and totally stalling that assault. So they are unable to pull Astral Shift from z -Pi prior to Vendetta. And that is the main objective of Change My Mind. And the longer that they spend in midfield, the more damage they take, the further they fall behind, and the more likely they are to lose so i am curious if they can make it to that point or if they're going to just crumble under the pressure vendetta trades for astral shift here and and dampening and zpi can escape in ghost wolf while looney is crowd controlled so i think that this is a, a fair moment or fair exchange of cooldowns from zpi definitely going one for one however I see Veins is available, so now they can go with that for a big punch. They need to make sure that they take off the Ghost Wolf when they go for the attack. Lightning Lasso, Acro in trouble, no Iron Bark for seven, no Cloak for 30 seconds, so Acro has a hard decision to make. Does he push forward and try and get the kill when he has such limited defense, or does he wait and lose potentially the opportunity to be able to win the game? That is about when uh, the situation that he needs to create and decide on his own. They aren't on match point just yet, so the stress isn't at its highest point, but if they could take away Tolveron, that means that the biggest maps are out of the pool, and I would say that's favorable to change my mind because their spellcaster compositions are just inferior to the ones that wildcard gaming have, and these are the largest maps, and they benefit the spellcasters the most, especially the ones that are the most superior. Acro stunned up again, and Poike denies the kill with Iron Bark. Mana is still even. It is still too difficult to call who is going to take this. However, the longer that it goes, the more of a stalemate that it is. I do favor wildcard gaming. Yeah, I feel like wildcard gaming with the way they're playing it, it's looking good, but things can spiral out of control really quickly against an assassination rogue in dampening one of the highest single target damage classes in the entire game. Full cyclone on Looney, Polymorph on tomorrow. Good crowd control here. Mpoike gets swapped to. He has to be a little bit scared in this situation, activating his innervate. Mana, relatively even for both of these healers. Icy Vance gets popped out by Morrow. He's looking to get really aggressive. Meanwhile, Fried Kitty as well. He's trying to get some damage rolling on to Zipai. Fried Kitty has to be careful. Big Shatter combo potentially coming from Morrow. Fried Kitty hightailing it out of there. He's going to be hiding as much as possible, but he blinks in line of sight. He's just taking so much damage. Scary. That was a bit of a scary replay there for Fried Kitty. That could have uh, been a big mistake. Comes out of the ice block, still kind of low. Does get Polymark to reset on health. Mana actually in favor of Change My Mind, so perhaps if they can prevent Looney from regenerating that, they could win with just some sustained pressure. Although Fried Kitty will have to be careful. Now down one ice block, the lead is in favor and cooldowns is for wildcard gaming. Vendetta gets activated, Morrow polymorphs Acro, but gets interrupted on the follow-up, and then polymorphed himself, so good denial. So Acro gets good uptime. Blind, Looney uses whoa, whoa, whoa. Italian fair trade. Fried Kitty gets bursted, and this is the downside <laughs> when facing the Elemental Shaman Mage. Is you feel like you're in control, and you're making the push, but suddenly it's just turned on its head, and you're at 2% health, and oh. having to ice block the second time, Iron Bark's out of the way. And I mean, at this point, they they have to kill z in the next stun. There's no Astral Shift. No Gliders Medallion and Looney. So if they get perfect crowd control and Morrow goes AFK effectively and doesn't use anything to get out of crowd control to stop them, then maybe they can Whoa. kill Z-Pi. Uh, Morrow actually getting aggressive, ice blocking to try and get on target. He actually threw away two valuable abilities to save Z-Pi in the future to try and get aggressive. So perhaps an opportunity for Change My Mind, but they are very far behind. Yeah, but you can see z is in a lot of trouble, and this is what I'm talking about. The assassination rogue on that elemental shaman, it can become very scary, especially at 45% nice. dampening. Shadow step kick incoming from Acro. He's still all over z -Pi. z is trying to escape. He's trying to run away. Garot That's Silence it. comes in. This could be the setup that they need. They're losing all game, but at 48% dampening, they turned it around. z barely holding on. Lightning lasso on to Acro. Luna getting out of crowd control, but he does not have enough time. Changed my mind. A ruckus in the lower bracket looking for a rematch against Method Black, which they got stomped earlier. So hopefully this warm-up on Rogue Mage, if they manage to make it all the way, could 
prove to be quite an entertaining grand final if they decide to mirror each other and decide who is the best rogue mage druid of europe in the summer cup number one of course ball card gaming they want to be getting top first place finishes so they can pass method black on points because right now north america has one spot at blizzcon if north america wins the next land they will have i believe three spots and europe will only have one and that one spot will go to the top point earner which is currently method black so wild card gaming have to outperform method black in all, basically every cup if they want to pass them on points and have that security to qualify to the world finals yeah, it looks like change my mind. They're opting for the train the healer strategy. Fried Kitty and Poike are going to be looking to control up Zipa and Blizzo as best as possible, while Acro creates some windows of opportunity onto Looney throughout the game. And if they can consistently do that, they can really limit the damage Blizzo and Zipa have available. Fried Kitty now getting bursted down. And one thing we have to see from change my mind in this matchup is avoiding the ability Dark Simulacrum from Zipai. Zipai, with that ability, has an opportunity to steal spells from his opponent. If he takes a powerful spell like Cyclone or Polymorph, he's going to be able to use that on him in Poike and start generating a lot of pressure for his team. So a little mind game uh, that Fried Kitty and Poike have to be very well aware of. Uh, Looney being pressured early on, changed my mind, are definitely open to swapping to the healer, which is another vulnerability of the Mistweaver. Fried Kitty, though, taking quite a beating here from Blizzo, trying to blink to safety using Frost Nova, Ice Nova to hold Blizzo in place so he cannot immediately reconnect. And then also Frost Nova immediately afterwards. I feel like Zipai has not moved for some time, but will now be making his way towards Fried Kitty, and there will be nothing to stop his assault. And that means that they will engage crowd control and Minpoike. Change my mind in the position. No, they can't avoid damage, so they are going to trade defensive cooldowns, the Temporal Shield but overlapped with the iron bark. So this slight overlap is now an opportunity for wildcard gaming. They're waiting for another big push. They're waiting for z to get out of crowd control, which he now has. It's time to make a push with that opening. Because of that mistake, the temporal and iron bark aren't available. This could be a good push for an ice block. Ice barrier denying it for now. Fried Kitty gripped back into the fight. z wants to make his way back, but unable to. Fried Kitty using mobility during this attack, both of his shimmers, to avoid having to use an ice block. And it's all about denying the ice blocks from wildcard gaming. And he's doing that through the usage of shimmer, iron bark, and temporal. Although making some mistakes, how do they decide to deal with this leg sweep? And Poike is going to use Iron Bark. Fried Kitty should not use Temporal Shield in this position so that he can use it on the next attack. This now allows them to be more aggressive, and they are going after Looney with that opportunity. I think it's a really intelligent strategy. Honestly, as a Frost Mage, having you know Windwalker Monk and Unholy Death Knight train you down, it really severely limits your opportunity to build up your damage with Frostbolt. So. I like the idea that they're going after Looney instead and just putting as much control as possible on the Blizzo and z because if those two t classes, the Windwalker, the Unholy Death Knight, have high uptime, it's really difficult for Minpoike to deal with that. So just put control on them, try to attack the Looney as often as possible. But the thing is, Looney's been doing a really good job in this matchup so far. He's been able to tank through a lot of the damage Acro has available. Of course, if we move into dampening, that becomes a little bit more difficult, limiting some of that passive healing Looney has with the Renewing Mist, with the Serpent Jade Statue, and that's when you know his tree starts gets opened up and you can get interrupted on soothing miss and poiki actually getting swapped to here nice job by wild card gaming sort of keeping change my mind guessing i think they were getting a little bit too comfortable with this train fried kitty strategy so i think Whoa. finding those opportunities are going to be big big attack on the looney beautiful cyclone from in poike denying you see all those glowing icons before below looney's health those are important cooldowns that keep him alive, but if he's cycloned, he can't gain any advantage of them. So Minpoike totally shut Looney down, now tossing out a Star Surge and trying to go for the kill. Zipai was able to steal a Cyclone and use it on Acro to also try and save him. That is one of the key moves that kept Looney alive during this attack. He cannot afford to make a mistake like that again, especially deeper into dampening. That was almost their entire tournament over right there and they need to place first they need to beat method black they have to pass them on points otherwise they have no security to make it to blizzcon yeah definitely an interesting moment for sure acro kidney shouting up looney blizzo uses his transcendence to get in line of sight using the grapple weapon onto acro this is an honor talent that I see Blizzo run more than any other Windwalker monk. The ability to grapple weapon from your opponent, limiting their damage. It's a great way to slow down Acro, especially during those kidney shots on Looney where he is the most vulnerable. So as long as Blizzo is on point with those grapple weapons, he can save Looney quite frequently. I mean, Poika was able to sneak away and recover his mana. We have just entered dampening at this point in the game. 
Have to see what they can get done. Glizzo and Zipai, they've been sort of thrown for a loop. Normally, when Walker Death died, they can just sit on the mage and it limit his damage and eventually you win, but they haven't been able to get anything from Fried Kitty at this point in the game. And because of that, they're going after different targets, but I think it's a mistake. Fried Kitty, you can see he's able to just free cast Frost Wolves. All of a sudden, he can load up his damage by building Icicles, building uh, Fingers of Frost procs, as well as Brain Freeze procs. And if he can get out that damage, it makes it so difficult for Looney to heal through the Rogue powered with that mage that's just free casting. And as a result, you can see Blizzo, he's in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, Blizzo is in a bit of trouble. That's mostly off the back of Looney's decision to not use Glyre's Medallion on Blind. He anticipates that he's the target, so he wants to use his Glyre's Medallion on Kidney Shots with Vendetta. And then in this case, Blizzo has to use his own personal defensive cooldowns because Looney isn't healing him while he sat there blind. This now opens an opportunity for Change My Mind to kill Blizzo instead, so Looney has to be ready. He could be the target, Blizzo could be the target, and Change My Mind have that surprise at their disposal. How they utilize it could determine whether or not they find victory or not here on game number four in this series. It's match point for them, so the pressure is on. Yeah, pressure is on. That's right. Blizzo charging forward. He's going to be doing a little bit of damage over on the Fried Kitty. They managed to slow down in Poike's drink, and that's a win condition here for Wildcard Gaming. On this smaller map on Dollar Dalaran Sewers, it's a great opportunity to make sure Mipoik is not able to drink. By Kitty getting bursted down to Pearl Shield does bounce him back to full health. Kitty shot over onto Looney. Once again, Blizzo uses Transcendence. He uses the grapple weapon into Asphyxiate Sound. They're really trying to punish Acro for being behind the pillar, but Mipoik is in a great position with Iron Bark, with Innervate to keep him alive with those very powerful Restoration Druid cooldowns. Now it's a Blizzo that's under fire as Fried Kitty has been generating a lot of momentum for his team. Yeah, he has been developing a lot of momentum for his team. Dampening kicks in, mana is even, cooldowns are even. It's still anyone's match. Wildcard Gaming can keep their tournament dreams alive, and they're making a big push. Fried Kitty could fall if he makes a mistake. Ice block is forced. One ice block out of the way. Now, perhaps a slight advantage to Wildcard Gaming. Here's the decision that Looney needs to make. Does he use the Gliders Medallion to get out of this crowd control? and save Blizzo, or does he allow Blizzo to use personal defensive cooldowns? In this position, he's decided to let Blizzo use personal defensive cooldowns. He feels that he is more likely to die in the future, and whether or not that decision ends up being correct, we will find out momentarily. Can Blizzo outplay his opponents? He's gonna have to make sure that his transcendence is always out of line of sight, and he is able to use it whenever Looney is crowd controlled. He's gonna have to be kiting as effectively as players like we saw yesterday, like Zach. If he makes even one mistake, and we have seen him make mistakes with that transcendence where he portals nowhere, he will die. It looks like Wildcard Gaming, though, they're mixing it up. They are relentless in their assault to try and maybe get a kill here on Minpoike, but Fried Kitty was more than ready. Polymorph's lined up. z can't connect, and Minpoike recovers. Yeah, I think that's one of the strengths of going after the Frost Mage is you limit those Polymorphs and damage as much as possible when you're not on them and you're making these swaps on them in Poike and Acro. As long as Fried Kitty's ready, he can defend quite easily with Polymorph and with Novas and Roots. So I think when they do go for those all-in setups on them in Poike, they need to be throwing out a Paralysis, a paralysis on Fried Kitty or a ranged interrupt like Mind Freeze to slow down some of those peels and allow their assault onto Minpoike to be a little bit longer lasting. Now Fried uh -oh. Kitty getting interrupted. Big burst damage once again. Temporal Shield looking to deny but they did manage to get the Iron Bark and the Temporal Shield. Fried Kitty, both his Shimmers. At this point, he's just a sitting duck. If we can see Blizzo get some uptime once again, Fried Kitty really can't go anywhere. And this is the moment they can get the second Ice Block. No Temporal Shield, no Shimmer, no Iron Bark. Fried Kitty has to hold on somehow. And not a lot of mana either. I mean, Wildcard Gaming, they're in a pretty good position right now to take this to a game number five. But change my mind, have the swing match advantage. They can pick the map. They know a comp is coming their way. So... This entire series really rests with them and their ability to out-strategize their opponents should this go to game number five, which it's looking like it will. Touch of Death about to explode, and it's going to be doing a huge hit here on the Fried Kitty. And Poike desperately trying to stabilize, but he is also being pressured. He's just actually just dying to the Unholy Death Knight pet off to the side. Change my mind, they're desperate to kill Looney, but Grapple Weapon denies any damage from Acro. Acro, he can't stay on target. Looney is so healthy on mana and cooldowns at this point. But in Poike, look where he is. He's in stealth. Zipai's trying to get there to stop him, but why was the pet not him in Poike? Did he shot mouth it off? He got some mana, but really, I don't think it's enough, but at least it's something. Yeah, better than nothing still. Fry Kitty, no temporal shield, no iron bark. Blizzo, Zipai, they're on target. Can they get the second ice block? A full Kitty shot on Looney. He could be in trouble. Ring of Peace gets dropped out by Blizzo to try to keep Looney alive. And Poike actually charges in and gets the diminishing return bash. I think that might have been a mistake. Now he's really scared. Asphyxiate into leg sweep. What has been Poike going to do to get away? 
does manage to escape, but that was a definitely a risky play coming in from Mpoike. Yeah, very risky play, although being up in the series, I think you can take risks, and if it pays off, you just advance to have a rematch against Method Black. If it doesn't, you go to game five where you have all the advantages. So I do think Change My Mind should take risks, try and go for some all-ins. They've managed to set up a drink. How much mana can they get? I mean, if he ends up even getting, oh my goodness. Change my mind. They've just yeah. kept their tournament <laughs> dreams alive there with that drink here on Dalaran Sewers. That's going to open up a huge Whoa, amount of extra time. Nice setup. Although, gripped into a double stun means an ice block. So there's no defense. They actually switched him in Poike as well. I love the swap. As soon as the mage is immune to damage an ice block, hit something else that isn't immune. Put pressure onto two places. And Poike then has to spend a lot more time recovering. Good reaction from Wildcard Gaming. But because Minpoike got a drink, I believe that he can heal this for some time, even though there are no ice blocks. They're going after Blizzo. They're trying to get that touch of karma before blind. Acro is actually marching over, kind of anticipating that Blizzo will run and also looking for blind. Looney still reluctant to use Gliders, now using it. So I do believe they're going to kill Looney in the near future. There's a Vendetta available. Change my mind, can 100-0 Looney if they properly crowd control z -Pi. anti Anti-magic zone's the only thing that could keep Looney alive, really. Ooh, touch of death. But here comes a big push. Iron Park needs to be enough. Will it be is now the question. Touch of death about to explode. It's a big hit. Dampening is very high. Blizzo in a bit of trouble at the same time. He's afraid. He actually portals away and abandons the kill on Fried Kitty. Now he's still low on health. Looney is crowd controlled. Touch of karma. Blizzo's 1v1ing Acro in what could be the final seconds of the match. Acro goes for a vanish play, setting up even more damage, but Looney's out of crowd control. Acro he has could just die. And Acro doesn't. It's looking like we're going to a game five. Minpoike gets an inter interrupted, and Acro loses the 1v1 behind the pillar. Wildcard gaming tied up. That reminds me of a need first place finish after first place finish if they want to surpass Method Black on points and have security at the BlizzCon finals because right now Europe overall is going to be a lot more stressed as North America took the last LAN event. Yeah, like you mentioned, Sid, it's very, very important here for Wildcard Gaming to try to catch up on points with Method Black because Europe, they just, they're just losing every single international LAN le lately. Yeah, I mean, you definitely can't argue with that. You need to, I, I, I'm not happy you're bringing that up. I'm <laughs> just going to set these guys off again. Yep, here we go. <laughs> Looney into a kitty shot. Is he going to be taking too much damage? Blizzle once again, grapple weapon, going to look to deny. But Looney's not in the best situation right now. Acro's having a really difficult time reconnecting to his target. Chains of Ice, such a powerful snare. I mean, we talk about the Frostmage snares quite a bit. Most of their snares are very powerful, 60%, 70%, but Chains of Ice for a Death Knight is absolutely insane. And you can see Acro right now trying to get on target, but z limiting his mobility with that Chains of Ice consistently in this matchup. It makes it so Acro can really only get uptime during the Shadow Step Kidney Shop windows. Yeah, but even in that small window, he can net a kill for his team. They've got Vendetta. There's no Gladys Medallion. There's no Life Cocoon. And on Runes of Lordaeron, you can totally get a kill on a healer, and I do think that's why I changed my mind went for this map. They want to kill Looney. Now, if Looney isn't ready for that, then maybe they just lose a series. They lose an opportunity to earn a lot of points and surpass Method Black, which have effectively been their rivals throughout the entire year. And then Method Black are just sitting comfortable. They've got the security. They've got the guaranteed spot on points. Wildcard Gaming, because of the difference between first and second, assuming that Method Black get top two every single time, it's only a 20-point difference. And right now, there's 20, 60 points difference right now between them so it would take more than three cups of getting first and second for wildcard gaming to pass them that's why it's so important for wildcard gaming to not lose here they, they cannot afford to lose here and that's a question i actually have for zico if there's any actually he was quickly looney could actually be taking quite a bit of damage he does manage to survive the growth silence comes in as all three members sort of dogpile who will survive off the back of that life kicking but i was going to ask you zico if there's any healer in europe that you would bet on living against Rogue Mage, who has a lot of practice, who would it be? Healing stat, obviously. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, healing stat. <laughs> All right, that's competing in the AWC. Second. Looney. Yeah, it would be okay. Looney. I feel like Looney, <laughs> if there's any healer we can count on to make sure he's effectively rotating through his cooldowns against a Rogue Mage in order to survive on the Mystery Monk, on the Restoration Druid. I mean, this guy has done it time after time, year after year. So I feel like changed my mind. They definitely have their work cut out for them in this particular matchup if their main strategy is just train down Looney. So far, so good for Wildcard Gaming. They hold a lot of defensive cooldowns. They haven't been caught off guard, but nice drink from Minpoike. 
resetting his mana, realizing that was definitely not going in his favor, has now brought his team back into the fight as a result of that, while Kurgimi maybe dropping the ball or just unable to stop him. Interesting move here. Zipai uses Dark Simulacrum to steal Polymorph from the Mage Fried Kitty, then use that Polymorph on Minpoike to stop him from healing, so then they can attack the Mage who is not being healed. Unfortunately, not enough damage to really get a nice block with that attempt. It is definitely unfortunate. Change my mind now, changing gears, going after Looney once again. Ooh, nice. Gonna burst him down, counter spell, interrupting Looney. He can't heal. He wants to go for the way of the crane, maybe, but then gets Cycloned at low health. That is resetting the cooldown of Kidney Shot for Acro, which can stun a target. It is very effective against a healer, stopping them from healing when they are stunned. Looney needs to avoid Acro laws at all costs. Acro is just Terminator style at the healer right now. If he connects with that Kidney Shot and Vendetta, it's likely that we'll see the Glider's Medallion, which then opens up potential to win with Blind instead later Man. on. Although Acro has spent a lot of time running at the healer, he's overextended. And I mean, that's how they lost Dalaran as well. So he needs to be careful about choosing when to get overly aggressive. This is really good positioning coming in from Looney. Not a lot of healers will use this little area, this little grave site um, to just sort of maneuver and manipulate the enemy team. But all of those graves are out of line of sight so if he can get behind them it makes it really difficult for fried kitty to get off any sort of significant damage and also you're dragging acro in a position where he's out of line of sight of been poike so been poike you can see he's positioned quite far away but when acro's chasing looney he's forcing been poike in to a closer range and acro's actually not able to get heals unless been poike gets right on top of him so i think this positioning coming in from wildcard gaming is really really intelligent and it's allowing zipa and blizzo to develop a lot of pressure in the match I also can't believe that you guys wouldn't have said that Botar is the best healer surviving Rogue Mage, considering Adrian got to experience that firsthand. Zipai, although getting bursted down now in this position, has to trade out the Icebound Fortitude to stabilize, and even still is actually quite low on health. It's a bit surprising to see the Death Knight under so much pressure before we've entered dampening, but he has now recovered. That could be an option for Change My Mind if they can maintain mana deeper into dampening to kill the Death Knight. We've certainly seen that as an option in previous games. Yeah, definitely. I was just baffled at how long it took you to come up with that insult against Adrian. <laughs> he was so proud of himself. Yeah. He had a big smile on his face. The big <laughs> smile on Whoa! Weekend. By Kitty getting bursted down to Pearl Shield, bounces them back up. He's already used the cold snap. He's only got one ice block left. And Poike's mana is doing quite well, but Looney's doing way better in terms of mana management at this point. He's just having to heal himself up. He transcendence is out of line of sight, connects a few heals, and now he's completely fine. If Fry Kitty wants to chase, he has to use Shimmers, and unfortunately, he gets himself in a really awkward situation. And Poikie was able to sneak away just a little bit, but didn't have time to fully recover his mana in the game. It does top off Fry Kitty, but slowly but surely, Wildcard Gamer are developing a lead in terms of mana. Yep, definitely a significant one. And Poikie will need to retreat off and drink. Looks like he's trying to do that right now. So Wildcard Gaming, what are you going to do while Minpoike drinks? I guess you're just going to kill the rogue. I mean, that's a perfectly viable option. Acrolol has to respect that push, use Evasion Cloak of Shadows to survive, and now he'll be vulnerable. Fried Kitty's already down one ice block, so they trade to get full mana on important and essentially vital cooldowns to stay alive through burst damage, which will then prevent Acrolol from being as aggressive as he would like to be in the future. So I am curious if Wildcard Gaming can see that opportunity, seize that opportunity, and punish moving forward, because otherwise, then Poike is doing a great job on his mana management. Yeah, it certainly is, but the thing is, we saw in the last game, even though Poike was able to recover his mana, Guess what? Windwalker, Death Knight, they do a lot of damage. They can just out flat out win the game, even when the Wrestle Druid does have mana. So this is a very scary composition to go against. Zipai actually getting swapped to, and I think this is going to be smart. If Change My Mind can stall out the game a little bit longer, they go after Zipai at later stages of dampening. Early on, the Unholy Death Knight with Death Strike has a lot of self-healing, but that severely gets limited later on, and they do manage to force out the Life Cocoon on Zipai. Poike being caught into a leg sweep, Acro running away as he realizes he's in a bit of danger. He's got no evasion, no vanish, no trinket, no nothing. And without cooldowns on a rogue, you're very squishy target. If Blizzard and Zipai can land a full stun on him with any sort of crowd control in Poike, he could definitely be a vulnerable target once again. Change my mind, have been on a tear. They've been taking games off teams that they were 0 and 18 against or 0 and 15 against in the spring season. They've definitely improved, but. Here, it's still an even ball game. Anyone could take it, and it's game five. The loser is going home in third place. Change my mind, are already so far behind on overall points in the standings that 
perhaps if they got first place every single time and Method Black had a terrible performance throughout some of these cups, they could pass them. Although I feel like the situation is not possible. Change my mind, I think are relying mostly on qualifying through winning the summer finals at this point in the year in terms of their point standings. But to guarantee a qualification there, they need some top performances. So finding a win here against Wildcard Gaming, having a rematch against Method Black would help their odds. That Ring of Peace, did it hit Min Poike? Not sure. It looks like they're going to have to trade an ice block yeah, for mana. That's a big deal. But now Acro is getting swapped too. If, they have, if he has to use evasion on top of an ice block, two members will be in danger moving forward. And Wildcard Gaming could just overwhelm change my mind. This is, I would say, now in favor of Wildcard Gaming heavily. Yeah, definitely Acro. Gladiator Safeguard does end up proccing with the feint. Zipai a little bit of a vulnerable target. And of course, Minpoikir was able to recover some mana, but that was at the cost of a nice block from Fry Kitty. He has Cold Snap coming up in around 40 seconds. He'll be safe once again once that cooldown is up. But Blizzo and Zipai, they're going to be looking to generate some pressure. Zipai marching forward, trying to roll some damage on Fried Kitty. There's an opportunity. If they can get the Iron Bark out, it's going to be massive. Temporal Shield, Iron Bark, Overlap. Now there's a short window where Touch of Death is available for Blizzo. And Fried Kitty, he doesn't have the cold snap for 20 seconds. They can make an all-in push right here, right now. Ring of Peace knocks Fried Kitty back into Z5, back into Blizzo. Leg Sweep gets traded out. Blizzo, why are you not using Touch of Death? This is the perfect moment. This is literally the perfect moment. They could have taken him down, but Cold Snap will ultimately roll back up in five seconds. And I think Fried Kitty is going to be able to hold on. Opportunity missed and whiffed for Wildcard Gaming. Touch of Death, the strongest attack in Wildcard Gaming's arsenal. There was a moment of opportunity where Change My Mind had no defenses for it, and they didn't activate it. So now Fried Kitty does have defense for it. Acro does have defense for it. So unlikely that it will find a kill and likely that this game will continue on. Although if Minpoike can get mana, Zipai certainly becomes an option to kill. Perhaps Change My Mind should look to soften him up, get through some of the cooldowns now so that when dampening is higher, he is as vulnerable as possible. And Poike, he's done it. He's, he has full mana. This is exactly what he needs to be able to find a kill on the Death Knight. I mean, they, to find a kill on anyone, but the Death Knight does become increasingly more tasty because his mobility is limited. And then when Death Strike is not so effective, he can't run away, he can't Death Strike pretty much just die so at 40 percent dampening that is going to be the magic marker for change my mind and they have everything they have evasion still they have one more ice block they've got iron bark and they've got full mana full this sap. is looking solid for change my mind full sap on the looney they move forward frozen orb gets dropped out blizzo trying to back him up grapple weapon over on the acro paralysis incapacitate on fried kitty and he completely shuts down that attempt on zipai zipai does manage to hold on but looney actually traded out the life cocoon he throws out the life cocoon he's actually going down for a drink so preemptively activating that damage reduction that the healing of or that big damage absorption effect and allows him to recover his mana completely very heads up play by looney all right looney both healers are at full mana and we are getting to the chaos zone of dampening it's game number five anybody could take it at this point one mistake is going to cost you the tournament you're going to be going home in third and of these three teams they are the top point earners of the entire year change my mind in third wildcard gaming in second so there's a lot on the line in terms of potential qualifications to not only the summer finals but blizzcon in the world finals as well there is good pressure right now from change my mind on the two targets as they continue battling it out now out in the open i would say this positioning favors the rogue mage so perhaps wildcard gaming should reposition zpi He's going back and forth between the tombstones, now pushing out towards Acro. Beautiful Dark Simulacrum on Cyclone. And Poike is now Cyclone. He can't heal, and it's his own Cyclone that he's sitting through. This one mistake could cost them the series, as Acro Lulz is so low on health. Dampening is so high. If Minpoike is even interrupted on one heal, it could easily be the end of the game. Cloak of Shadows available. Minpoike recovering, trying to fake cast. Doesn't want to get interrupted by any sort of crowd control or interrupts. Zipai retreats back to the pillar, realizing that the kill is now lost. Perhaps trying to wait for a kill later on. Minpoike jumps in for crowd control, but gets deflected away by Zipai. Good defense there on his part to break up the crowd control, but now Minpoike is poking closer. Fried Kitty's on one side, Minpoike on the other. They grab Minpoike in. Are they going for the swap? Are they going for the one-two punch on the healer? Maybe they just killed two targets at the same time. This damage could be overwhelming at now 45% dampening. Acro, what are you going to do? Cloak of Shadows on such low health. Minpoike somehow, some way, keeping the team alive. It is his drinks, his mana management that have finally gotten them to this point in dampening where they have an opportunity to kill, I would say, either Looney or Zipai. Change my mind, just need to execute it out. They need to get the damage. 
on to Z by as soon as possible, but they're falling behind. Uh -oh. There's no answer. Blizzo's touch of death is about to explode. It hits Acro hard. A stolen polymorph on Minpoike once again from Z Pi could be the game winning factor. Two members at critical mass in terms of health. Acro needs most of the triage though, as Fried Kitty has ice blocks. Minpoike knows that and allocated all of his big steals to Acro instead. And Fried Kitty is focused on avoiding damage while Minpoike tries to set up heals for him as well. Ooh. And momentum is so far in favor now of Wildcard Gaming that I'm almost feeling that they should be able to walk away with it. Looney moves in. This is surely an ice block, and they will get it. They can now switch to Acro, start crunching away at another member of the team. They still haven't got the vital cooldown anti magic zone or anti magic shield, and Wildcard Gaming are looking solid to make it to the grand finals. Yeah, they're looking good. Leg sweep on Fry Kitty. He trinkets out. Ironvark looking to deny the kill. Fry Kitty has to hold on a little bit longer. They turn their attention over onto Acro. Looney gets caught into a full polymorph, and now z is in trouble. He has the anti magic shell. They shred through it. 52% dampening. Oh. He's got no self healing. Looney has to start finding some heals. Anti-magic zone gets used. Bash coming in from Minpoike. Great crowd control. Looney still in trouble. Life Cocoon gets used. Full stun now over onto Acro. Fried Kitty trying to do as much crowd control as possible. Manages to find the polymorph onto Looney. Do they have the damage to take down z -Fi? Full Whoa. line on Looney. He's trying to stay alive. Acro's also low in the meantime. This could be a cross kill. I don't know if z is going to be able to hold on. Yes. Nice counter spell by Fried Kitty. z -Fi, I don't think you're getting out of this one. And ultimately changed my mind in a beautiful game. Managed to hold on and send Wildcard Gaming straight out of the tournament. All it took was a mild 56% dampening there from Change My Mind, but they find the drinks, they find the kill. And for the first time, I believe, in the entire feed versus the fake zebras, we're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.